The cost of college is skyrocketing. Outstanding student loan debt this morning totals more than $1.4 trillion, and it is growing. Today's installment of our ongoing series, Issues That Matter, focuses on the presidential nominee's plan for education. We look at everything from pre-kindergarten to college. We spend more money per pupil than anybody else, and we're at the bottom of the lists. We're going to change that. We're bringing it locally. We'll be doing it with love and smarts, believe me. We're also going to strengthen education at every level, starting with universal pre-kindergarten education. We will rescue kids from failing schools by helping their parents send them to a safe school of their choice. I want good schools with good teachers in every single zip code in America. And Common Core, bum, out, out. I have always supported national standards. I think we need better and fewer tests that are used for what tests should be used for. I'm going to work with Congress on reforms to make sure that if universities want access to all of these special federal tax breaks and tax dollars paid for by you, that they are going to make good faith efforts to reduce the cost of college and student debt and to spend their endowments on their students rather than other things that don't matter. And I'm going to make public colleges and universities tuition free for any families making less than $125,000 a year. Students should not be asked to pay more on their loans than they can afford. And the debt should not be an albatross around their necks. And if borrowers work hard and make their full payments for 15 years, we'll let them get on with their lives. We're going to change the way that debt works. We're going to bring down interest rates, and we're going to let you pay it back as a percentage of your income. And if you do certain public service or national service jobs, we're going to forgive a lot of or all of the debt in return for you doing that. Joining us to discuss this issue is Margaret Spellings. She was education secretary under President George W. Bush. Spellings helped implement the No Child Left Behind Act. She was also part of the effort to start a national conversation about the future of higher education. Spellings now serves as president of the University of North Carolina. She oversees 17 campuses and nearly 225,000 students. Good morning, Good secretary, morning. president. Mm -hmm. Adam, Adam, Adam so, I know. General. We, yeah. <laughs> We know each other from, from, from the Bush administration, and I was out there on the campaign trail when education was a frequent topic Absolutely. by the nominee. And while we just heard the two candidates talking about education, is this an issue, do you think, that's been front and center in this campaign? Uh, probably not as much as it was then, but, but I think clearly it's an issue that speaks to millennials, that speaks to middle-class families, and to women. Mm -hmm. And so to the extent they talk about it, I think that's the, who they hope is listening. And you said in your opening, you know, UNC, your inaugural address as you took over the presidency there, that you, we can't allow a child's future to be dependent on a zip code. Exactly. In many cases, it is. Absolutely. And that's our new uh, responsibility in, in American higher education is to make sure it's available and accessible for many, many more people than ever before. First generation, low income, and minority students. How do we do that? Yeah. Well, we make college affordable, for starters, and one of the things that drew me to North Carolina is it is a, a very affordable state in relative terms, but uh, it's still a struggle. Financial issues are often a barrier. Uh, I was, I was I've saying, heard you say that, that kids take too long getting through school. They do. What do you, they mean? Do. What do you mean? What I mean is uh, students need to get in and out of college as quickly and efficiently as possible in four years, optimally. Uh, as opposed to six. I mean, our completion rates are often based on six-year rates. And, you know, time is money. And so to be very efficient about what you want to do, your, pet, your trajectory to get through college, uh, so that you're not spending more time than you need to and spending more money than you need to, taking courses that are, you know, extraneous. Now, the two candidates have different positions on Common Core. Hillary Clinton says that she supports the national standards. Donald Trump says he will get rid of Common Core. Do you think it makes sense to start from scratch? Where do you com fall on that? Common Core, uh, these are state standards. This is a state-led effort that began with the governors and have been embraced now by 43 states. The reason that makes sense is because it allows 
technology and textbooks and teacher development, all sorts of things to be done uh, in, in a more efficient way and a more cost-effective way. It also helps people like military families who are moving around from place to place, you know, mm -hmm. Nora, mm -hmm. um, who, uh, you know, lose time and, and get off track because they're ta there's no coherence in the standards. And but so it makes a lot of sense to me. There's a lot of talk in this campaign about millennials and how they'll vote. A big issue for them is student debt. Yes, oh, yeah. absolutely. What should we do? Well, uh, obviously, the candidates have talked about putting more money uh, at the federal level, uh, you know, buying down interest rates for those current debt holders. But also, uh, I mean, Mrs. Clinton has talked about free college using federal funds. Bernie Sanders did that. Yes, too. absolutely. And, you know, as, as you and I were talking ever about, free? college is not free. Yes. Nothing is free. So it's all a question about who's going to pay yes. mm -hmm. the individual the state or the federal government. And so, uh, again, I think, uh, you know, people need to have some skin in the game. Uh, and, uh, you know, we need to make sure that, that people are showing up ready to do college work, uh, do it effectively and efficiently, and, you know, have as little debt as possible. But there are three schools at the University of North yes. Carolina where, you, where the tuition is $500 Will be. Per, per, yeah, per semester for tuition if you live in state. Yes. Well, how do you subsidize that? Well, then? and it's $2,500 for out of state students. We will have three institutions, Western Carolina, Elizabeth City, and Pembroke, yeah. who beginning in the 18 19 school year will have $500 a semester for tuition. That will obviously drive growth uh, in the student population, raise the quality of the student population, and it's a great deal. You know, this legislature, the North Carolina legislature, <clears throat> has done something we've asked them to do. Okay, for a long here's time. the question since you've been education secretary. What federal power can a president really have in affecting student inequality or teacher inequality or education inequality? Well, that varies whether you're talking about federal policy. We're a pretty big investor at the federal level, largely around financial aid, Pell Grants and student loan programs, work study, those sorts of things. I mean, big, big, many billions of dollars as opposed to K-12 where we're a 9% investor. So really, you can do a lot, mm -hmm. uh, especially if you're targeting that aid, those financial mm -hmm. supports to the, and, those that need and it. And do you think there should be universal pre-K? Well, I, I think what we need to do is make sure that the pre-K we have, largely Head Start, which uh, obviously is income-based, need-based, uh, is the right kind of pre-K, that it's, you know, sets the table for good learning, uh, that there's pre-reading skills and so forth. That, and so I think we need to get pre-K right before we expand it. There's also a debate as to whether everybody should go to college and would they be better off in community colleges and technical schools? Well, that's, that's the question. It's not about a baccalaureate degree. It's about everyone needing some post-secondary education, whether it's a technical education, a certification program. So when I say college, and I think Mrs. Clinton means this also, uh, that we're talking about some level of post-secondary experience at least two years. Mm -hmm. Just like we used to think of a high school diploma as the ticket to the American dream, now that's college, some college. What's the most important education issue that we're not talking about, Margaret, that you think we should be? Low expectations. I mean, I what think you mean? We, we, you know, it's President Bush used to talk about the soft bigotry of low expectations. The idea that half of our minority students, you know, can read on grade level yeah. or half of our minority students get out of high school on time. Uh, in, in disadvantaged communities is outrageous. Yes. You know, if half the school lunches were tainted, we'd be on fire. But, yeah. you know, it's, oh, we, we accept this underperformance, this underachievement, mm -hmm. and we can't. There should you be can't do do-overs, but do you believe that President Bush would have been a far different president if he hadn't gotten bogged down in Iraq? Well, I, I mean, that's what he campaigned on. I know. Be, you know that's my point. Yeah, so, you know, compassionate who knows? But, uh, you know, he did a lot in the domestic agenda, uh, that notwithstanding. So. All right, Margaret Spellings, good to have you at the table. And thank I love you your all. glasses. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm sitting there looking. Where'd you get those? Greensboro, right. North Carolina. Thank you very much. Thanks.